Hey, it's Ben, and I'm here to show you how color works in Photoshop. Let's dive right into it, because these are concepts you can use every single day. Let's start off with showing you how to construct a document that can teach you all about color in Photoshop. Literally, follow along with me. Go to the File menu and create a brand new document. The exact size is unimportant, but it should be at least big enough to fill your screen. Since this is on video, I've typed in 1920 by 1080 because that's the normal size of video. Then down here where it says background contents, set it to black. We just want a document that starts out full of black. And click create. Then all we're going to do is go to the tool panel on the left side of the screen, come down here just above the hand tool to the shape tool, click and hold on it, and choose the ellipse tool. Then at the top of your screen are the various options for the ellipse tool. Click on this right here and make sure it's set to create a shape. Then go right next door to the fill, click on it, and choose white. Next door to that you have stroke, set it to none, which is this little red bar. Then we're ready to create a shape. And all I want to do is create a shape that's about half the height of my document. So I'm going to click like this and start to drag. I'll hold the shift key as I drag to make sure it's constrained to a perfect circle and I'll end up with that. Then I'm just going to switch out of this tool and up to the move tool. Now this, I want to see how Photoshop would make it out of red, green, and blue light because this image is in RGB mode. To accomplish that, I need a total of three versions of this layer. One for each of the colors we're going to make it out of. So in my layers panel, I have that layer active and I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut to duplicate the layer. The keyboard shortcut is Command J, Control J in Windows, and I'm going to type it twice. So now I have a total of three of those circles. I'm going to name them. The top one I'm going to call red, just double clicking on the names. Then I'll call the next one green and I'll call the bottom one blue. And finally, I want to make sure that each one of these layers is only using one color of light to create it. To do that, I'm going to double click not on the name of the layer, but to the right of the name where it's empty. Then this comes up and I can ignore all the settings in here except for this little part right here with these check boxes. I want this particular layer to only use red light. So I'm going to turn off the checkbox for green and turn off the checkbox for blue. I'll click OK. Then I'll go to the next layer. I'll double click on it to the right of its name and that one I'm going to make it so it's only using green. Click OK. Finally, I'll go to the bottom one, double click to the right of its name and I'm going to set it to only work with blue and click OK. Now I'm going to use the move tool and with the move tool up here at the top of my screen, I have a setting called auto select turned on. And that means if I click on my image, it's going to automatically select the topmost layer that's there. Then I'm going to click and drag this top circle way over to the left. And you'll see that it's actually made out of red. And that's because it had that red checkbox turned on in none of the others. So the only thing this can be made out of is red light. Then I'm going to click right here and that's going to select green. I'm going to drag green to the right. So you can see these three colors side by side. And now if we let these overlap, there's a whole bunch we can learn about color. So I'm going to grab each one of these and let them partially overlap where there's just a little sliver kind of sticking out like this. Now you'll notice where all three of those overlap, it produces white light. And that's what you get when you use as much red, green, and blue light as you possibly can in Photoshop. But now that you have this document available, let me show you how to modify it. If I want to vary how much red, green, and blue is used here, all I need to do is click right here where I see red to make the red active. Then if you look over in my layers panel at the top, do you see a choice called opacity? I can change the opacity setting for that layer using the number keys on my keyboard. If I press 1, I get 10%, 2 is 20, and so on. And the only thing is, in order to get it up to 100, uh, you type 0, but sometimes you want to get it literally to 0. And to do that, type the number 0 twice. The first time you hit it, you get to 100%. But if you type it twice rapidly, you should get to 0. And therefore, you should be able to get the brightness of that layer to be any amount in a 10% increment by using the number keys on your keyboard.
All right, now let me show you what you can do with that document and how you can learn about color. You're welcome to follow along with your own version of the document, or you can just watch what I do on screen. Here I've opened a special document that's going to show us ha what happens when we combine an equal amount of red, green, and blue. That's what I have here. Our stripes were here. We have 100% red, then 90, 80, 70, 60, and so on. And let's see what happens if I move these until they overlap. And if I get all three of them to overlap, then what do we end up with? Shades of gray. Anytime you have a balanced amount of red, green, and blue, then you will have a shade of gray. You'll have no hint of color whatsoever. If you want to see that in your own document, then you could end up clicking on the red circle, type a number on your keyboard for what percentage you'd like, click on the green, type the exact same number, and click on the blue. And again, type the exact same number, and you'll see, regardless of which number you choose on your keyboard, as long as you end up with a balanced amount of red, green, and blue, you will have gray. But then, let's learn about the opposite of shades of gray. Shades of gray is where you have no hint of color whatsoever. Now let's learn how to make the most vivid colors you possibly can. To do that, I'm going to click on my foreground color here in Photoshop, and we'll just look at these numbers down here that are for red, green, and blue. Know that the number zero indicates no light whatsoever, so you're using none of these colors. And the highest number it can go to is 255. So I'm going to choose the most vivid version of any color. So here I'll choose a blue color, and the most vivid version is up here in the corner. So I'll drag right to it. Then I'm going to cycle through all the colors I could possibly use at their most vivid state. You'll see the actual color right here. But what I want you to be doing is paying attention to these numbers, because you can learn something about them. We've already learned that if those numbers are perfectly balanced, then we're going to have a shade of gray. And I can go through all the shades of gray from white all the way down to the darkest one. And if you stare at those RGB numbers, you'll see they're always in perfect balance. But what I want you to notice is what's the formula for making the most vivid colors? Because there's a really easy formula that has to do with the RGB numbers. Just look when I go through all these colors at what is consistent about those RGB numbers. Here goes. Just stare at the numbers and notice what's consistent. Every single one of these colors that I'm choosing has two of those RGB numbers being at a certain value. And what it is, is one number is always 255. The second number is always zero. And that means that if zero means none of this, and 255 means as much as you possibly can, the more these are out of balance, the more saturated the color is that you're working with. And if, whenever you choose a color, you find that the numbers in here are not at 255 or zero, that means the color you're working with could become more vividly colored. And that's just a simple idea to file away in your head. So now let's learn even more about color. Every color you ever see in Photoshop has a formula for how to make it. And that formula is made out of those red, green, and blue numbers. Let's take a look at the formulas for these and see if you can recreate them using the document that you created. If I move this, you're going to see the formula for that color. And that means if you have three circles, one for red, one for green, and one for blue, if you were to click on part of the red circle and then type the number 7 to get it to 70%, then you could click on the green to make that active, and you could type 6 to get it to 60%, and you could click on blue and type the number 2, and you could get it down to 20%. And if you did that with the document you created, you would have this exact color. You can do the same thing for any of these other colors. Here are the formulas for each one, and each one of these can be done using the document that I showed you how to create. The only thing you have to do is switch between the three colors. So here I'll click on the red, and I'm going to make this color. I'll type 5, I'll click on the green, I'll type 4, I'll click on the blue, and I type 3. And now I have that particular color. But when we think about this, uh, there's a reason why. But when you think about numbers in Photoshop, 
let's cover up those and let's see what you actually get because we don't use percentages. We instead use the numbers 0 to 255. And that's because we have more choices if we use 0 to 255. Instead of having 100 choices, or actually 101 if you count 0, we have 256 choices. And there's some simple math you can do to figure out how many colors you'd be able to create using each of those choices. If you use percentages, then you only have the option of creating 1 million different colors. But if you use 0 to 255 numbers, you can create up to 16.7 million unique colors. It's just simple math, but that's why we don't use percentages most of the time in Photoshop, because we want to be able to define a wider range of colors. So far, we've only talked about a few colors in their basic formulas. Now let's actually look at those 0 to 255 numbers and figure out how could you describe every single color that is in this color spectrum. Well, first, let's simplify this image. I'll put it over on the left, and I'm first going to take away the brightness differences because it's dark on the outside and it's bright on the inside. Now we just have the base colors at one brightness. But if we do that, we don't really need the middle of this wheel because the colors on the outside are the same as the colors on the inside. So let's just make it so we have the outer rim. But then if you look at that outer rim and you notice right at the very top we have red, well, what if I were to just slice it down at the very top and then straighten it out into a horizontal bar? I can do that and if you look at it, the left side of the bar is identical to the right side of the bar, so you could bend this into a circle and the ends would perfectly match in color. But that'll help us simplify this so we can figure out how you can make all these colors using 0 to 255 numbers in Photoshop. Well, let's not define all those colors at once. Let's simplify it, reduce the number of colors we're talking about, and let's reduce that even further. Then let's look at just those colors. Now, we're talking about red, green, and blue. So three of these colors should be pretty darn easy to create if we're using RGB numbers. So for red, if we want something to be as red as it possibly could, we're going to get the number for red to be 100, and the other two numbers will be at zero. Green, we're going to use 100% green, and blue, we're going to use 100% blue. That's pretty straightforward. But what about the colors that are depicted in between those? Well, just compare the leftmost colors that we do have numbers for. And just look at what's the difference between those two numbers. How would you create something that's in between those two? Well, if red uses 100% red and blue uses 100% blue, what if we do both at the same time? Well, if we do 100% red and 100% blue, we get that color that's in between. And then if we go at the next missing uh, numbers and we look at those, it's the same thing. You look at the color on the left, we're using 100% blue, compared to the color on the right, we're using 100% green, and just combine those two together. But we can't quite do that for the color here on the end, because there is no color beyond it, so we can't just take this formula and compare it to the one over there. Um, actually, we can. If you remember back to the color wheel, remember it's an unbroken circle. It goes all the way around and around. So if you look at these particular colors on the color wheel, and we go in this order, you'd start with red and you'd work your way around this way to find the other colors. And once you got to yellow, if you had just kept going in the same direction, you'd bump into red once again. That means we could just put another red square over there because it's like a color wheel. It would just ch keep changing over to uh, that color once again. So now if we wanted to find how to make that yellow color, just look at the color to the left and look at the color to the right and combine together what's being used. 100% red and 100% green is what we need. So then let's look at the colors that would appear in the color wheel in between those. How the heck do we make those? Well, if you look at the first one and you think about red, green, and blue, all you have to do once again is compare the color that's on the left to the color that's on the right. Look at the numbers that are there. Notice red is 100 in both. So we're gonna use 100 for the color that's in between. Notice the green is zero in both. So we're gonna use zero green in the color that's in between. 
then blue is zero at one and 100 at the other. So how would we kind of average that out? Well, halfway between zero and 100 would be 50. And that's exactly how we'd create the color that's in between. You could do the same thing for all those other colors that we don't have numbers underneath. Just compare the color on the left and the color on the right. Look at the formula for them and say, how would I go halfway in between that? And you could fill in all the other numbers. And if you were to extrapolate that further by adding even more colors in between those, you could eventually define all the colors that are in that spectrum of colors. But then we want to start thinking about brightness as well, because so far we've only worked with those most vivid colors. If we go a little bit brighter or a little bit darker, we'd have to think slightly differently. So let's just pick one of the colors within this. I'm going to pick blue. We already know how to make the middle color that's there because that's 100% blue light. So if I want to make something that is the same basic color but is brighter, look at the RGB numbers that are already being used there and say, how would you add more light? All you would do is add the lights you aren't using yet. So let's say we use 50% of each. Well, that's exactly how the color above is made. Then if you go and think about making a darker color and you look at the color that's in the middle, well, there's only one color of light being used. So the only way we could make that darker is to cut down on the amount of blue light. So let's just cut it in half. And that's exactly how the color below was made. So we could therefore extrapolate because we know already we kind of defined the amount of red, green, and blue in those middle colors and so then you could figure out how much you'd need to use to go brighter or darker. All you would end up doing is taking whatever number is at zero and increasing it to make it brighter. To make it darker, take whatever number is at 100 and decrease it. So you could define all those other colors using those numbers. But we don't need to see the numbers, so I'm just going to move on. Therefore, we'd be able to describe all the colors that are found right here in this whole spectrum, and then you'll be welcome to wrap around in a circle if you prefer to view them that way. What should you remember out of this? Well, the minimum I'd remember is that RGB, red, green, and blue, those numbers from 0 to 255, it's useful to know a little bit about them. The part I would really try to remember is that when red, green, and blue are balanced, you have gray because then you can move your mouse over anything in your image that you think should visually look gray and see if they're balanced. And if they're not, whatever number's too high, you got that number contaminating that area. It's not really gray. Then if you wanna look at an image and say, hey, is that color as colorful as it could possibly be? Well, you should remember, how do you make a saturated color in Photoshop? The way you do that is if you look at the RGB numbers, what you need is one of them to be zero, another one to be 255, and the third one, it doesn't matter. It could be anywhere in between. But as long as one is at zero and one is also at 255, you have the most saturated color you could possibly make in Photoshop. So when I hover over an area, like a red balloon, I could say, hey, could this go even further or not? Just be careful when you do hit zero and 255, if you push the littlest bit beyond, it just starts throwing away detail. And you'll see a red balloon where it used to have shading go around it just become a solid color, just like a solid color of text or those circles we were working with in Photoshop.